Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining us. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture this morning will come from Psalm 61, 1 through 6, and then verse 8. Psalm 61, 1 through 6, and verse 8 from the ESV version. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against my enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Verse 8 says, For I will ever sing praises to your name, as I perform my vows day after day. Our song this morning is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. People, we do not want God to pass us by. We are calling on the Lord on behalf of our nation. We know that COVID-19 is still here and taking the lives of the people. Racism and division are still here. Voter registration fraud is here more than ever. Sickness and death is still here. Every time we turn around, there's sickness and death. Our lives have been turned upside down and inside out. All of a sudden, we question whether or not it is safe to send our children to school. Teachers are stressed out and worried about getting sick if they do their jobs. All of a sudden, we question whether it is safe to go to church. But let me tell you something. I have good news for you today. God is still on the throne. He sees all. He knows all. And he is going to hear our prayer. So we just thank God for just hearing us. And we're praying that the saints will just continue to pray that God will hear our voice and hear our cry. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. He Me at the throne of mercy. 
Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus of Christ we come. We thank you again, Father, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father, for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and saving our souls. We thank you, Lord, for wrapping your arms around us all day and all night long. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for giving us another opportunity to praise you. Father God, to give you glory. Now, Lord, we ask you to speak to us this morning through your word, that your word will fall on good soil, that your word, Father God, will make us just what you would have us to be, that your word will develop us and form us. And Lord, Father God, we ask you to bless us, that we will be humble enough to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in the mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus one more again. We thank God for giving us another chance to come to him and to honor him, praise him one more again. We honor the almighty God for just being good and being God. He's given us another chance. He's given us another chance. I blew out my second chance a long time ago. He keeps giving us, giving us another, another chance. Let me call your attention to the book of St. Matthew again. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Today we'll be looking at verses 9 through 14. Matthew chapter 24, verses 9 through 14. In the New Testament, the book is St. Matthew. The chapter is 24. The verses are verses 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Matthew chapter 24, verses 9 through 14. When you found it, you will discover these words. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because of lawlessness will abound, the, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. I want to talk about then the end will come. Then the end will come. Remember, as we introduced this particular chapter to you on last week, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. And first of all, they were concerned about buildings and the buildings of the temple. Their concern was whether or not the end was near. They asked Jesus a series of questions. He, they wanted them to, him to tell them when will these things be? And they asked this question right after Jesus said that there would not be one stone on top of another. There would not be one stone unturned. So they asked the question, what are the signs of your coming and when will be the end of this age? So we find ourselves in the midst of chapter 24 of Matthew, and we find that Jesus is pointing out to them the present age will come to an end, but some things have to happen before that. Let me make sure you understand, this is not the rapture. This is not the coming 
of Jesus Christ when he stops in the middle of the air and when he called us from, from rest to reward. It's not the time. This is not the moment when Jesus raptures the church up, takes us out of here. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that we will forever be with the Lord. This is not the moment where the, ch the church gets a chance to be snatched away. It is not the moment when the church of Jesus Christ go on to forever be with the Lord and celebrate him. But rather today we're talking about those signs that leads into the end times of that age, of this age. We are certainly in the end times. We are certainly at the point where the devil is having his way. I, I, I look at the news. When you listen to the internet, when you observe videos and news reports, when you read the newspaper in the latest bulletins of the day, these things are always recognized in our daily news reports. You see, what we read in the newspaper, what we see on the internet, what we visualize in our lives, we see today that it is just confirming what God's word has already predicted. Amen. Let's look back at chapter 24. When we look at chapter 24, verses number 4 and 5, I pointed out on last week that there will be false prophets. There will even be false crises. When I say crises, I mean false Jesus. There will be men who will come to planet Earth who's been walking around on planet earth for several years and they will tell other people that I am the Christ. I pointed out to you on last week that there's a man who is considered the most powerful man in the world who's walking around today talking about he can save you uh, without a silly cross. The same man says that he has done more for African Americans than any other president since Abraham Lincoln. The same man has come to the conclusion and has told us that he's done more for Christianity than Jesus Christ himself. I want to tell you, we are at that point where we are experiencing the birth pains. Mm -hmm. The birth pains that will take place right before the great tribulation begins to happen. We're at that point. We're at that point where Jesus can come back any moment. Yeah. No particular events have to take place now for Jesus to snatch the church out of here. That will be the great getting up morning. It will be that great getting up evening because we don't know the time nor the place. So we better be ready. Well, preacher, how do I get ready? Well, you get ready by confessing Christ as your Savior. Believing the gospel story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a tree. They nailed him to that stake believing that they took Jesus off the tree, laid him in a barber tomb, and early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. Amen. We believe that if you believe this story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and trust this story to get you to heaven, we believe that you are born again. Amen. We believe that you know Jesus. We believe that your sins have been washed away, and we believe that you are pure in the face of God because Jesus the Christ pleads our case on our behalf. Yes. I want to tell you today, you can get to know Jesus. Amen. You can qualify for heaven. Yes, and it doesn't matter what you've done wrong. It doesn't matter what you have been. It doesn't matter who you've done it with. 
you get, need to get to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. He can save you today, and you can miss out on these moments that we are pointing out today in this great tribulation. Look at verses 4 and 5. It says that there will be false prophets that, that will deceive many. There will be several that will say that they are Christ. There will be men who will think, even in their mind, that they are who they're not. Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, in these last days, evil and perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Love will wax cold. People will come and shoot you in the head who've never met you. People will shoot you at point blank range, kill you because love has waxed old. Love has waxed so old and so cold until we need to understand that people will deny the God who has brought us thus far. They will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They will be lovers of the creator more than lovers of the creature, rather, more than lovers of the creator. We have to understand that God has created us. And because God has created us, we ought to love him with all our heart. Men will, will give over to unnatural affection where men will be with men and women will be with women. These are signs of the times in which we live. When we look at the text today, we're looking at this great tribulation. We're looking at the time where, where men will confess themselves to be prophets who are nothing but false prophets. Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 to, through 2 talks about this Antichrist. And this Antichrist is one who will come riding on a white horse. He will give off the symbolism of purity. He will make men think that he is of God. He will make men think that he is pure as the driven snow. And he comes riding on this white horse because he wants to paint a picture before you and me that uh, he is pure. This is the Antichrist. He is the one that will cause men, women, boys and girls to go astray from the almighty God. Matthew chapter 24 verses 4 through 6 talks about this Antichrist, talks about the one who, who will not, will not, will not come will not present God in a pure form, but make you think that he is even a God himself. We move to Matthew chapter 24, verse number six. It declares to us that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. There will be devastation. There will be bloodshed. There will be such devastation until wars will be on the horizon. Wars will be taking place. Wars will be going on for many years, and we see that even today. Mm -hmm. We see that there are wars, and then there are rumors of more wars. These are the signs of the end times. But the end, he says, in verse number six, is not yet. He moves on, and he says in verse number seven, that nations will rise against nations. Nations will rise against nations. We can see it even today. Those who used to be our allies <laughs> are no longer our allies. Those who used to fight with us and fight for us, there's been a rift <laughs> that split us apart. We live today where not only are nations against nations, but the text declares there will be kingdoms against kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Everywhere there's a king, there is a kingdom. 
whether they are self-made kings or whether they are kings that have been anointed by the people, everywhere there's a king, there will be strife in opposition. The text declares in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 7, that nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. Amen. Let me just say to you and remind you today that we in America, we in the great United States of America right now are in the midst of a great civil war. We're in the midst of a civil war because we are at odds against each other. We are tearing this country apart because of our own selfishness. Republicans want their way. Democrats want their way. Independents want their way. Those who have no title want their way. This country is being torn apart. It is just evidence of these birth pains that Jesus the Christ is going to allow the great tribulation to take place. He moves in, in verse number seven, and he, he says to us that there will be famine and there will be pestilence, earthquakes in various places. Famine. Don't you see now that, that people are in line just to get food? Don't you see now that people are are hanging out just like the homeless was hanging out months ago. And now those who used to have jobs are unemployed and they are hanging out also. Just to get food, just to get milk for their baby, just to get clothing for their families. We're in the midst of great famine. It is suggested and it is reinstated in, in Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 6, where it says that there will be a penny for food and, and there will not be enough food and, and there will not be enough food because the food stamps will be so high. A penny was a day's wage. And what it's saying is, we will have a day's wage of whatever you make, and it won't be enough to get you a good meal. There's a famine in the land. There's a shortage of food. There's a shortage of good food because we got to stand in line to get it. Because when you don't have employment, you don't have money, when you don't have food, you have to stand in line to get it. Not only that, he says there will be pestilence. These pestilence, these, these little critters <laughs> will bombard our nation, will bombard our world, will overtake us. It reminds us of the days of Pharaoh when God said to Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go, so there was flies everywhere. Flies in the chicken soup. Flies in the sink, flies in the bathtub, flies in Miss Pharaoh's hair, flies in the weave, in the wig. There were flies in the bedroom, flies in the sink. There were flies in the living room, flies in the den. Pestilence all over the place. Wow. That wasn't enough. There were frogs everywhere. Frogs in... <laughs> the living room, frogs in the bedroom, frogs in the kitchen, frogs in the garage, frogs everywhere. Sometime I believe that, that we are just like Pharaoh. When it was given, Pharaoh was given the opportunity to, to get rid of the frogs. frogs said, Pharaoh said, I want one more night with the frogs. And there are people today who want one more, one more night, even though they don't like frogs, even though they're scared of critters, they want one more night. Why well, you say they want one more night, preacher? Because God is calling us to clean life. God is calling us to honor him. God is calling us to walk with him. God is calling us to obey him. But we have chosen the pestilence. We have chosen one more night with the frogs. He moves, he moves, and he says in verse number seven that there will be earthquakes in diverse places. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be earthquake in unfamiliar places. 
And let me just tell you, there's an earthquake in places that they've never been before. There are fires that are burning up a whole portion of the nature, the nation. Not only are there earthquakes and there are fires that even in 2020, there have been hurricanes like never before. At one time, there was four hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico all alone in just that one body of water. There are tornadoes, there are twisters all around us. Let me just share with you, let me just share with you, these are the birth pains yes. that leads to the great tribulation. He says in verse number eight, Matthew chapter 24, that these are the beginning of the sorrows. He says to his disciples, Jesus says to his disciples, the end is not yet. What he's saying is it's going to get worse. So you better get better. We have to get to a point in our lives where we obey God in such a way that God is able to walk with us and we are able to walk with him. We move to our lesson for today. Not only is there wars and rumors of wars, not only is there famine, there's great death taking place. There's death in the form of a pandemic. There's death in form of an epidemic. There's death in form in the forms of famine. There's more death today than we ever had from one cause, even more so than the blue bunny plague. Amen. These are just birth pangs. <laughs> You know, when the baby is about to be born, when, when the thing is about to happen, the pains get more intense. And not, not only do they get more intense, but, but they get more frequent. Let me tell you, you, you don't, don't get surprised. Don't be surprised that on November 6th, November 7th, November 8th, and November the 3rd that we have even greater birth pains. That's why we need to go and vote early right. so we can be inside on November 3rd. That whole week, November 3rd, November 7th, November 8th, November 10th, stay inside. Make sure that you carry yourself where God can protect you. So when we look at verse number 9, Matthew chapter 24, it says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. You see, Christians have always been hated by the world. Christians have always not been respected by the world. Christians have always been misused by the world. But this is on a level like never before. This is an accelerated hatred. This is an accelerated persecution. This is accelerated murder. Let me just share with you, today is a good time to be a Christian. It's a good time to walk with the Lord, because if it had not been for the Lord, wonder where would we be? We need to walk with him because he is our fortress. He is our stronghold. He is our protector. He's the only one who can keep us in the midst of all that's going on around us. Matthew says, verses, verse number 9, Matthew 24, it says that they will kill you. They will deliver you up to tribulation. They will make sure you go through some things. They will make sure that things that you're going through are not just things that happen in your everyday life. They will make it hard for you. Mm. I'm reminded today that the governor of Texas decided that he's going to shut down poll locations. Shut down dropout locations so it can make it difficult for folk to vote. But the God that I serve yes. is working behind the scene. Yes, and because he shut it down, because he's trying to, trying to abuse and trying to oppress us from our voting, voting has taken place in record numbers all over the county. Yes. God always has a way of defeating Satan's plan. 
Yeah, they want to kill you. They want to move you around. They, they want to put you in the midst of tribulation and hatred will come from your nation, your very own nation, because of Jesus' sake. If you're walking with Jesus, you ought, to, you ought to expect some tribulation. If you're walking with Jesus, you ought to expect some hard times. You, if they don't like Jesus, they sure not going to like you. He says that, that you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Yet we need to walk with Jesus. I don't have a, I don't have a choice in the matter. I got to walk with Jesus because as I walk with him, he keeps me sane. Yeah. Is there anybody else who's kept sane by Jesus? Is there anybody else where Jesus is keeping you holy? Is there anybody else that Jesus is keeping you sane? Amen. If it had not been for the Lord, I could have lost my mind a long time ago. But I thank God that he's kept my mind. I thank God he's kept my health. I, I thank God that he keeps right on keeping me in spite of me. That's right. In spite of where I messed up, in spite of, of falling short, God keeps right on keeping me. And if you're going to tell the truth today, whether you love him or not, God has kept you. That's right. And nobody can keep you like God can keep you. He says to us in verse number 10, and then many will be offended. Many will betray one another. Many will be offended. Let me just share with you. If Jesus is lifted up, mankind is offended. If you're talking about Jesus, the world will always be offended. If you're talking about Jesus, they will get on the offense. If you're talking about Jesus, they will get on the defense. You can talk about Muhammad all day, but when you represent Jesus, they get offended. That's right. When you represent Jesus, they get, they get upset. When you, when you pray to Jesus, when you, when you acknowledge Jesus, they all get upset because of Jesus. They will betray you. They will betray one another. We, you see, when we find ourselves in the world in which we live today, loyalty is not to be found. People that you think would be loyal Lord to you will walk away from you. This is a problem in marriages. This is, this is a problem in homes. This is a problem with our nation. Loyalty is being torn asunder. We lack loyalty. In our homes, there's a split. Everybody wanted their way. In our marriages, there's a split. Everybody wants what they, they can get out of it. There is no loyalty anywhere you look. They will turn against you. They will betray you. Those who say they love you will betray you. These are just signs of the times. They will betray, betray you and they will turn and hate one another. The thing about this, this process of them hating you, they will also hate one another. I oftentimes see people who, who want to dig ditches for others. Sooner or later, they are, they are fighting against each other. They were buddies. They, they were looking to, def, to defeat a common enemy. They were looking to tear somebody down. They were looking to mess up somebody's reputation. But Lord have mercy, they turn against one another. Mm -hmm. These are just signs of the time. I want to tell you, the end is not yet. These things must happen, but the end is not yet. Verse number 11. Then many false prophets will rise up, and they will deceive many. You see, I, I just don't see it. If you're walking with the Lord, if, you, if you're walking with him, if, if you love him, you've given your life to him, I just don't see how little simple stuff can make you turn away from the Lord. We see it in our everyday life today. We see it in our everyday life. We see every day that men who have degrees, women who are extra smart, have come to the conclusion that because this man says it, I ain't going to do it. Because he says I don't have to do it, I'm going to follow his plan. 
We said we, we see it with mask wearing. People refuse to wear a mask because Trump says don't wear a mask. People refuse to, to take shelter and to stay out of large groups because Trump says it's all right. People refuse, even today, to move their lives based on another man when they see it, that people are dying and being devastated. It is a period of selfishness. It is a period where we have gotten to in this nation and yes, preachers need to be preaching against it. Yes, preachers got to call them by name simply because if we won't stand for the people, if we won't stand for the God that we serve, we need to shut our Bibles and go on home. We need to shut our mouths if we're not going to tell what the word of God has said. So in verse number 11, it reminds us again that false prophets going to come up. And we ought not have more false prophets than we have true prophets. Yes. We ought not have more false prophets that's prophesying lies to people. We ought to have men who will stand and tell God and tell people what God has said. We ought to talk to God for the people and we ought to talk to the people on what God has said. He says that then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And some of the deception that's going on today is simple stuff that all you got to do is use common sense. You don't even have to be spiritual to keep from being deceived today. All you have to do is use just common sense. All you have to do is use common sense, and as you use common sense, even if you get the virus, you don't put yourself out there to get it. Yeah, that's right. Because a man, they, they interviewed they interviewed some people the other day at a Trump rally, and then when they interviewed some people the other day, they said they don't wear masks, and they say if they get it, they get it. It don't it don't last long anyway. And then the question was, if President Trump told you to wear a mask, would you wear it? And they said, yes. Wow. How stupid. How ignorant. You don't need another man mm. to tell you to protect yourself. Yes. You don't need another man. When you see the statistics, Dr. Fauci has prophesied. Dr. Fauci predicted 218,000 deaths by the end of October. We are nowhere near the end of October. We still have two weeks and 218,000 deaths has been wiped out already. We have surpassed it already. It th at those rates, we got to wait till the president tells us to wear a mask. We got to wait till the president tells us to socially distance. We got to wait till the president tells us to not have big gatherings. It's just common sense. But these are the signs of the times, and this is still not the end. It says in verse number 12, and because of lawlessness will abound, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will, draw, will grow cold. Lawlessness. The President of the United States has said, boy, he's all in this text, isn't he? The, the, Lord, the, Lord, the Lord God has a way of, of putting things together before we get to it. God knew that I would be standing this day talking about this text. God knew it when it was written years ago. The President has predicted that he is the President of law and order. And he says that if Biden is, if Joe Biden is elected, then there will be chaos all over this nation, and there will be there will be there will be problems that where people will burn up the place, where where people will be looting. Has he not forgotten that he's the president right now? Has he not forgotten that he's the president when lawlessness is running rampant throughout this world? He says when the next man is elected, there will be lawlessness because he is the president of law and order. The text declares 
that lawlessness will run a rampant. The lawlessness will abound. Lawlessness will, will be everywhere. And love will run cold. Love will not be on the scene. People would rather see you die than to help you. People would rather see you fade off the scene than help you. People will rather see you down and out than to bless you. Your girlfriend, your dog, your boy, they would tell you, hey, girl, as long as you were catching the bus, you was all right. Now you got your own ride. Now they're saying to you, everybody ain't able. Let me just share with you this. As long as people can keep you down and they're able to help you, then they're your friend. But the minute you get on their level or above, they have a problem. That's a problem. That's not friendship. We have to understand that love is what moves this Christian life. Love moves this life on our behalf. It takes love to make sure that life continues as God would have it to continue. But love in America has waxed cold. Love has waxed so cold until mothers can't trust their children. Love has waxed so cold until mothers have to put locks on their bedroom doors to keep from being dead in the morning. Love has waxed so cold until women are killing their own children. Love has waxed so cold until the caregivers are the ones that's taking lives. Because love has waxed cold. These are just birth pains. For the tribulation. We, we're in the midst of we're in the midst of an issue. We're in the midst of a problem. And, and I'm telling you that we are not going to be able to get out the problem without Jesus. Yeah. We're not going to be able to be cured without Jesus. Yeah. We're not going to be able to make it without Jesus. And Jesus is love. Mm -hmm. Verse number 13 says to us, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Let me just share with you now. This verse is not saying that you have to work your way into salvation. This verse is not saying that you got to make sure that you endure these tribulations to make it. Today, we're preaching the gospel in order for salvation to be renewed, in order for salvation to be a part of your life, in order for you to be renewed. But this verse is not saying to work your way to salvation. We need to understand that as we walk with the Lord, as we are walking with him, as we are saved, we're going to get out of here in the rapture. And because, because, because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we don't have to appear in this verse. This is not the verse that's talking to us about being saved. It says those who endure to the end, during this great tribulation process, there will be some that will be witnessing and sharing the word of God. And those who are in the tribulation will be saved if they just endure to the end. But today, we are able to get it right right now. Today, we are able to love the Lord. Today, we are able to see what God is doing. Today, we are able to be blessed of the Lord and qualify for heaven. God has blessed us today to have a gospel that is real to us, a gospel that makes us, a gospel that qualifies us for heaven. So those who endure during this great tribulation period, those who endure, will endure to the end. Let me just share with you, there's great chaos. There's great chaos throughout this whole world. There's chaos. And we who are saved, we who are saved will be out of here. We won't have to go through it. Right now, we're having to go through it because it's birth pains. But during the tribulation, we need to understand we're already out of here. And because we're out of here, those who are left will have to go through it. You don't want to go through this. No. You, don't, you don't want none of this. <laughs> you, you don't want to go through this, when, especially when all it takes is for you to believe the gospel story. Yes. Verse number 14 says, 
in this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations as a witness to all nations. And then will the end come. Today, preachers ought to be preaching this gospel. Preacher told me one time, he said, look, man, you got to stop preaching this old gospel in order for you to have your church packed the way my church is packed. Well, when I look at the day, first of all, his church is not packed today <laughs> because Corona has paid all of us a visit. And even if you're open in the church today, it can't afford to be packed simply because you got a socially distance. Secondly, when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to understand nothing can substitute for the gospel of Jesus. Nothing is better. No current events, no common stuff, nothing that people can identify with should ever take the place of Jesus' righteousness and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, we ought to be preaching this gospel. We ought to be telling this gospel. We ought to be witnessing to this gospel that men, women, boys, and girls can get to know Jesus as their personal Savior. He says, even in the tribulation, and this gospel will be the standard. This gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ will always be the standard and then the end will come. Mm -hmm. This gospel of the kingdom, Jesus has a way of intervening here. And when Jesus intervenes, mankind is made the better. Mm -hmm. As Jesus intervened, we got to continue to tell the good news. This word gospel is good news. This word gospel is good, glad tidings. This word gospel is the great message of Jesus Christ. And the world won't come to an end. The end won't come to an end until Jesus Christ has been preached throughout the whole world. Yes. The church ought to get busy now. The church has to get busy now telling the world about Jesus the Christ. The church needs to get busy telling the dying world that Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. Amen. The church has to get busy telling the world that they hung Jesus on a stake. We got to get busy telling the world that Jesus died for our sins on an old rugged cross. Yes. We got to get busy telling the world that Jesus died on Calvary. They hung him between two thieves. He died a voluntary death. Jesus the Christ died on Calvary that day. They took him off the cross, laid him in a bar of tomb. Out of that third day morning, he rose from the dead. Yes. It's time for us to get busy now. It's time for us to, to, to get busy telling folk about the good news of Jesus Christ. It's good news to know that over 2,000 years ago, he gave his life as a ransom for you yes, and for me. It was a ransom for you and for me because the devil had us bound. It was a ransom for you and me because over 2,000 years ago, even before we showed up, Jesus gave his life for you and me on a cross. Amen. Yes, he did. He gave his life for us on a cross. We got to tell somebody that this cross that Jesus died on just wasn't any old stick. It was a cross that, he, that would save all mankind. Amen. You see, in Jesus' day, the cross was a symbol of frustration. The cross was a symbol of humiliation. The cross was a symbol of a curse because the Bible teaches that cursed is he that, that was slain on the cross. Cursed is he that hung on the cross. But when Jesus hung on the cross, it was Good Friday <laughs> because when he hung on the cross, he did something that no other man could ever do. He died on the cross and he resurrected our spirits. Yes, he did. He died on the cross that day. Mean men, mean men killed him. They laid him in a barber tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. He rose for you, and he rose for me. That same Jesus that rose from the dead is waiting on you. 
The same Jesus that rose from the dead is saying, come now. The same Jesus that rose from the dead is waiting on you to receive him so he can receive you into heaven. The same Jesus that, that rose from the dead is sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and for me. He says, come today. There may be somebody listening to my little message today that have come to the conclusion that the end is not here. That then the end will only come after this gospel has been spread throughout this world. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. In this pandemic, we need Jesus. You see, it's gone from an epidemic where it, it spread widely to the gone to a, a pandemic where it's a worldwide phenomenon. And it's quite evident for the last year, it has been quite evident that man can't fix it. It takes Jesus. And if you don't want to enter into the great tribulation, you can set the record straight today. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 9 that there will be locusts released. It says in Revelation chapter 9 that a great meteor or a great star will fall to the earth. It will be a dark valley, a dark hole, and out of that will crawl locusts. Locusts who are built like a horse, who uses its tail to sting mankind for five months. It says that man will want to die, and they cannot die. It will come a day when death will be on the run. There will come a day, the text declares in Revelation chapter 9, that man will desire to die, but death will flee from him. What it's saying to us, you can jump off a tall building if you want to hit the ground. <laughs> Organs fly everywhere and you're still living. Man will be stung by these locusts for five months. It will be so bad until man will want to die and they cannot die. For death will be on the run. That's Revelation chapter 9. But I say to you today, you don't have to wait to Revelation chapter 9. You can get out of here in Revelation chapter 4. You can get out of here in Revelation chapter 4 by preparing today to be saved. By preparing to go to heaven in the rapture. By preparing for this great getting up morning where Jesus cracks the sky. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18. I don't want you to be ignorant brother concerning those who are asleep. For those who have fallen asleep, those who have died, that's what it means. Those who have died in Christ, who believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't be concerned about them. For at the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel, the trump will sound until the dead will get up. And when the dead get up, we shall not prevent. This word prevent in the original Greek means that we shall not proceed. We shall not go before them. So the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up together with him in midair. It says for us to encourage one, one, one another with these words. So don't wait around here till the great tribulation takes place. Get on board today. Don't wait to Wednesday. Don't wait to next Sunday. That's not promised to you. But what is promised to you is right now. And you don't know when right now is over. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Will you bow your head with me and invite Christ into your life? Regardless of how young you are, how old you are, you need Jesus. And I want to lead you in this simple prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your life. Very simple. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, 
I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new creature. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer, we believe that you're born again. We believe that you're on your way to heaven when you die. There may be somebody listening to me today who, who's already saved, who already committed their lives to Christ, but for some reason or the other, you have not allowed Christ to be your Lord, where you follow him, you walk with him. You need to recommit. You need to rededicate. You need to repent. If that's you, why don't you, why don't you invite Christ into your life in such a way that he leads you and guides you. I know you're already saved. I know you're already born again. I know Christ is already in your life. But I'm asking you to submit to this way. Yes. I'm asking you to, to ask the Lord to be your Lord. I know he's your Savior. But for some reason or the other, you have not been walking with him. I'm asking you to inc increase your walk with the Lord. And even if you're in church or out of church, increase your walk with him. The third group that I want to make an appeal to today is those who, who don't have a church home. If you don't have a church home or you're in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the center of attention. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is the leader. Where Jesus is making a difference. You can join by broadcast. You can join online. So if you want a church home, inbox me and I will be glad to welcome you to the New Beginning Church. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior during this broadcast, inbox me and let me know. We want to rejoice with you and celebrate with you. If you have rededicated your life, recommitted your life to Christ, walking away from your sin, I want to hear from you. I not only want to rejoice with you, but I want to celebrate and I want to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Remember, the end is not here. The end is not yet. The end has not come. But Jesus can come at any moment and he can rapture us up and we will forever be with the Lord. I'm going to be in that number. I want you to be in that number where you're a part of the great morning, the great day, the great night, whenever God comes, where we can go on and celebrate Jesus Christ. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. It is now offering time. It is time to give unto the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give unto the Lord. You can do so in one of three means. You can give unto the Lord by giving to the New Beginning Church Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Soul. You can give to Cash App through Cash App. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is, as we lift Jesus, he draw all men unto himself. Or our third way that you can give is through P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. We're so glad that you've joined us today for our service. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night for our Bible study, Facebook Live, as well as Zoom. 
at 7.20 p.m., 7.20 p.m. Please join us. And then on Sunday morning for our live broadcast for Sunday School at 9 a.m., 9 a.m. every Sunday. In this service where you just join us at 1045 every Sunday, we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you as you participate in our service. Again, thank you to our visitors. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for worshiping with us. And thank you for giving to our ministries. Many of our visitors are giving uh, to our ministry. And I want to thank the New Beginning Church family for continuing your tithes and offering during this season. We believe that God is going to deliver us from this, this season. And he's going to do it at his time. We thank God for the opportunity to worship by way of live broadcast. I want to recognize some people uh, today. Uh, this is the time that we celebrate uh, report cards. We celebrate our youth and our young people here on third Sunday. Uh, and I want to say that some of them have mailed in their reports. And we are so glad to, that they have, have mailed in their report cards and, and uh, blessed us as we have, we have been praying for them in this, this trying time of school. I want a shout out. I think that's how the old uh, young folks say it. I want a shout out. I want a shout out to Braylon Bird, to Hazel and Carter. I want a shout out to them. First of all, for turning in their report card, Braylon and, and Hazel and are A.B. on a roll students. Hallelujah. They are A.B. on a roll. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank God for, for Braylon Bird and Hazel and Carter. We're celebrating their AB honor roll. We're just so glad that our children are matriculating through school, even in these trying times. We thank God for them. So we want to rejoice with them and celebrate them. Those of you who have not gotten your report card in, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your report card in. And to those of you who are working, uh, if you've gotten your evaluation, send your evaluation in. And even if your report card is not AB or your evaluation is not top of the line, Send it in and, and let's pray for you. Let us pray for you and pray with you. I want to recognize Sister Ashley Nanlaw. Sister Ashley Nanlaw has achieved her associate degree. We want to thank her. Why don't we thank God for her? We want to thank God for this sister achieving her associate degree. And she's going on to her bachelor's. Then she's moving forward to her master's. And then she's going to move forward to her doctorate. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm celebrating these young people because these young people are, are doing great things. And there are others of you who are doing great things. I need to hear from you. Please inbox Sister Davis or call her, text her, and let her know what great things that you are doing. Amen? And we're going to continue to lift up and to pray for our teachers and all our children. Our teachers are having just as hard of a time as our children during this pandemic. So we want to continue to pray for our teachers and pray for our children as they go through school during these tough, very tough times. Amen. We're praying for the Trejo and the Malo family as they have lost their father. Their father has transitioned, and we want to lift that family up, and we want to especially pray for her brother who was the caregiver. We want to pray for him and lift up him before the Lord. So, Sister Trejo, Malo, we are praying for this family. We are praying that God blesses you during this transition stage in your life. We are praying that God encourage you and, and be a blessing, a blessing to you as you go through this great transition. We are praying for the Carter family as the Carter family has, has gone through the death of Brother Carter's mother. We want to lift the Carter family uh, unto the Lord in prayer. Amen. I want to remind you to vote. Please, ma'am, please, sir, vote. One of the great privileges of the United States and our democracy is your right to vote. Don't let anything or anybody discourage you from voting. It's time to vote. I myself stood in line for four hours, was glad to stand there. Whatever you do, go and vote. During this season, you can vote all over the city or the state that you live, all over the city in which, in the county in which, rather, you live in. So, don't let an excuse get through to you. Go ahead and vote. We need you. We need you to vote. We need you to vote. Everybody need to vote. Everybody need to vote. If we're going to get out of the mess we're in, we need Jesus and we need voting. 
Amen. We need you to, to exercise your vote. We need you to vote as if it's all dependent on you. And we need you to pray as if it's all depending on God. We need you to vote as, all, as if it's all depending on you. And we need you to pray as if it's all depending on God. Those two things can get us a better life in these great United States of America. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being here. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. We want to hear your voice, see your face. We want to see and read your comments. We thank you so much for being a part of the New Beginning Church, one of the greatest churches on planet Earth. We want to thank you for being a part of it. Amen. Again, thank you. Be blessed. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for keeping us. Now, Lord, we thank you that we don't have to go through the tribulation. We know that things are getting worse. We know that things will get worse. But thank you, Father God, that we're going to be raptured up from the church. Uh, raptured up from this church down here to the church over there. The old church will be leaving here in, in a moment, in the blinking of an eye. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless all our visitors, all our friends. Bless every member. We pray for the Carter and the Trejo family and the Malo family. We ask you to bless them and keep them, encourage them. We ask you, Father God, to bless their lives. Now, Lord, we ask you to continue to watch over our church as we are far distance from each other. Keep us together. Keep us focused on those things that are pleasing to your sight. And bless us, Father God, to go forward in your name. It's in the precious, mighty, strong, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12 and verse 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.